Hi everybody, my name is Nitin and welcome back to PSLE Science and in this video, I'll be going through heat energy. Okay, let's get started. So for the first segment of this video, I'll be going through the three factors affecting the rate of heat transfer. Let's take a look at it. Okay, so for the three factors affecting the rate of heat transfer, firstly, we need to know that heat travels from a hotter region to a colder region. So it is represented by this. So this red color is basically the hotter region and this is the colder region. So heat actually travels from hot to cold. Okay, you have to remember this. Now, let's take a look at the first factor. Temperature difference. The first factor affecting rate of heat transfer is temperature difference. So this is because of the larger the temperature difference between the two objects, the faster the rate of heat transfer between them. So you need to know that if the temperature difference is larger, the heat transfer is faster. Okay, the rate of heat transfer is faster. Okay, next, there is no heat transfer between two objects of the same temperature as there is no temperature difference. So these are the two things you need to take note of temperature difference. Now let's move on to the second factor. Okay, before that, we need to know what is temperature. Okay, because some of you might not know and they do ask this kind of questions in PSLD. So you need to know that temperature is the degree of hotness of an object. So let's take a look at the second one now. The second one is exposed surface area or just surface area. So this affects the rate of heat transfer. So let's take a look at it. The larger the exposed surface area in contact between the two objects, the faster the rate of heat transfer between them. Okay, and so this is the reason for exposed surface area so you need to know if the exposed surface area is larger which is in contact between the two objects the heat transfer is faster okay the rate of heat transfer is faster okay now let's move on so for the third factor affecting heat uh, transfer is basically heat conductivity of the materials so heat conductivity is basically like the better conductors of heat and the poorer conductors of heat so better conductors of heat are basically like metals like yeah and the poorer conductors of heats are basically like wood plastics or rubber materials like this so the reason for the heat conductivity of materials is basically better conductors of heat allow heat to travel through them faster okay and poorer conductors of heat allow heat to travel through them slower okay now i'm going to explain just temperature difference Okay, let's move on. So for just the temperature difference part, uh, this is what we have went through just now. Okay, so let's take a look at the question which I'll use to explain this. So question one, which cup will, of water will lose heat faster to the cooler surrounding air? So this is the cup, okay? So this is cup A, which is 50 degrees and is 100 ml. And this is cup B, which is 80 degrees and is 100 ml. So which cup will lose heat faster to the cooler surrounding air? Okay, so uh, the heat, the, the temperature difference, right? The larger the temperature difference between the two objects, the faster the rate of heat transfer. So cup B has a larger temperature difference, right? And cup A actually has a, a, a lesser uh, temperature difference. So the answer is that cup B, because it has a larger temperature difference. So there is a greater temperature difference between the water and the cup B and the surrounding air as compared to the temperature difference between the water in cup A and the surrounding air. Thus, the water in cup B will lose heat faster to the cooler surrounding air. So this is why. Now let's take a look at the second question to explain the temperature difference. In which cup will the water reach room temperature first? Is it cup A or cup B? So the answer for question number two is cup A. Because the water in cup A is at a lower temperature than water in the cup B, allowing the water in cup A to lose heat to reach the room temperature first. Because it is, it is at a lower temperature than uh, cup A, right? That's why. 
So, uh, then cup B. That's why um, it reaches room temperature first. Now let's move on to the second factor. And before that, we need to note that the rate of heat transfer between objects depends on the temperature difference between the objects and not the temperature of the single object. Okay, so this is very important. Now let's move on. So for the second factor, we have exposed surface area. So just recap, this is the thing. Okay, so let's take a look at the question that we will need to understand. So question one, which t-shirt A or B would dry faster? Explain your answer. So B is folded and A is not. Okay, so exposed surface area is that the larger the exposed surface area, the faster the rate of heat transfer between them. Okay, so this is folded, so there's not much, uh, there's no larger surface area, and this is not folded, so there is a larger surface area. So A would dry faster. So T shirt A would dry faster. T shirt A has a larger exposed surface area in contact with the warmer surrounding air. Thus, the water in T shirt A will gain heat faster from the warmer surrounding air and evaporate faster, allowing T shirt A to dry faster. Okay? So now, let's move on to the last factor affecting the rate of heat transfer. So the last factor is basically heat conductivity of materials. So this is what we have learned. So better conductors of heat allow heat to travel through them faster and opposite for the poorer ones. So poorer conductors of heat allow heat to travel through them slower. So let's take a look at the question. So this is the question and this is the situation, okay? So this is the question based on the situation. So let's take a look at the question. Nigel used his right hand to touch the metal leg of a table. So this is the metal leg, okay? Next, he used the same hand to touch the wooden top of the table. So this is the wooden top. He then concluded that the metal leg must be at a lower temperature than the wooden table top since the metal leg felt colder. So they're asking, do you agree with Nigel's conclusion? Explain your answer. Let's take a look at the answer. So the answer is basically no. I do not agree with Nigel's conclusion because the metal leg of the table is a better conductor of heat than the wooden tabletop. Thus, Nigel's hand lost heat faster to the metal leg, causing his hand to feel colder when he touched the metal leg. Okay, so this is the answer. Now, let's move on. So, for the second segment of this video, we have the seven heat processes. Let's take a look at it. Seven heat processes. So basically, there is evaporation, condensation, melting, boiling, freezing, expansion, and lastly, contraction. And all of this can be applied into the answering technique, which is the HPC structure. So first, heat gain or heat loss, which is the H. So objects gain heat from objects. So the object gains heat from another object or the object loses heat to the object. Okay, so these two objects are different objects, okay? Don't confuse yourself. It's just that it is based on the situation. So this is the answering structure that you must use for H. If you don't say it gains heat from or loses heat to, they will minus marks, okay? So please do remember this. Next, P which is the process. So there are seven heat processes. So we need to choose either one of these process which is applicable to the question, okay? So to heat process, change in state or volume, okay? So uh, loses heat to object, to heat process. Like if, if we say uh, the water loses heat to the cup, to condense okay so this is what i mean so it change in state of volume and form and forms water droplets so this is what you can see so there's like one to five states okay so one to five is basically this okay evaporation condensation melting boiling and freezing so this is the new state how does it form the new state 
and this is 6 to 7 expansion and contraction this is to increase or decrease in volume okay so you have to remember this a lot so HPC and C stands for the change in state or volume you have to remember this okay take note this is very important let me just put a star on this so that to emphasize that this is very important so now let's move on so for the third segment of this video i'm going to go through two things that he can do so let's take a look at it okay let's take a look at it so two things he can do so he can change in temperature so basically increasing uh, basically gain heat on and decreasing which is losing heat so change in temperature and heat can also change in state so it can change from solid to a liquid state uh, because of melting and this process uh, and this process is basically melting and it can change from a liquid state to a gas state because of boiling or evaporation and it can change and it can change from a gas state to a liquid state because of condensation and it can change from liquid to solid based on freezing okay so these are the two things that heat can do so let's move on so for the fourth segment of this video i'll go through the factors affecting the amount of heat in a substance let's take a look at it so number one the temperature of the substance so let's take a look at this over here so factors affecting the amount of heat in a substance right and this is number one and this is number two so i'll just uh, explain it to you later so the temperature of the substance okay so affecting the amount of heat in a substance right so they are both the same uh they are both the same amount right but this is 50 degrees and this is 100 degrees so this over here has more heat than this now for the volume this one has 100 ml and this cup has 200 ml and both of them are 100 degrees celsius but the 200 ml cup has more heat in it because it contains more water and it will need more heat in order to reach 100 degrees celsius and thus this one has lesser heat than the 200 ml cup okay so i hope you understand this let's move on so for the five factors affect uh sorry so for second number five the factors affecting the rate of evaporation so let's take a look at this so the factors affecting the rate of evaporation remember you need to you need to remember the acronym called wet w e t okay so take a look at this so the factors is basically w for wind Basically, you need to say presence of wind or the speed of wind and E for exposed surface area or just surface area and T for temperature of the liquid or the surrounding air. Okay, so let's take a look at the answering techniques. So for wind, wind removes the water vapor near the surface of the water, allowing the water to evaporate faster. The greater wind the greater the wind speed, the faster the rate of evaporation. So you need to understand this. Now, for exposed surface area, the greater the exposed surface area of the liquid, the faster the liquid gains heat from the warmer surrounding air slash the heat source to evaporate faster. Okay, so this is the answering technique for the exposed surface area. And for temperature of liquid or the surrounding air, the higher the temperature of the liquid, the faster the liquid gains heat from the warmer surrounding air or the heat source to evaporate faster. Okay, so let's take a look at the wind. So wind actually uh, uh, fastens the evaporation near the water surface, allowing it to evaporate faster. So this is the conclusion, the greater the wind speed, the faster the rate of evaporation. For exposed surface area, the greater the exposed surface area of the liquid, the faster the liquid gains heat because there's a there's a larger surface area, right? So the liquid can the, the surface of the liquid can evaporate faster because there's it's spread out more further. 
that's why and gain heat from the warmer surrounding air or the heat source to evaporate faster the higher the temperature of the liquid the faster the liquid gains heat from the warmer surrounding air or the heat source to evaporate faster since the liquid is already at a high temperature it's already evaporating and when it's gaining heat from another heat source it actually evaporates faster so this is the explanation for all of this now let's move on okay so this is the last segment of this video which is the hot and cold water concept let's take a look at it so for the hot and cold water concept we have the cold water concept first let me show you the cold water concept so the warmer water vapor from the surrounding air comes into contact with the cooler outer surface of the glass cup, loses heat to the glass cup, and condenses to form tiny water droplets. So how does this form? So imagine these red dots are actually water vapor, okay? So this water vapor, right, it actually comes into contact. And this water vapor is actually at a higher temperature than the water over here because it is a lower temperature. So when it comes into contact, it actually condenses in order to form water droplets. So this is how. So this is water vapor. This is at a higher temperature and this is at a lower temperature. So this is how it happens. So I hope you understand that. Now, let's move on to the hot water concept. So, the hot water concept is basically not on the outer surface, but it's on the inner surface of the cup. So, the hot water evaporates to form water vapor. The warmer water vapor then rises and comes into contact with the cooler inner surface of the glass cup, loses heat to the glass cup, and condenses to form tiny water droplets. So, how this happens is because because this is already at a higher temperature, right? The water itself. So it's at a higher temperature. And when it evaporates, there are some water droplets here. So basically, right, this part over here, which I'm covering, is actually very hot. And the rest over here, actually cold. The rest of the parts. So, uh, it's colder, okay? So when the warmer water vapor comes into contact, with the glass area over here, it actually forms water droplets. So this is the reason why. Okay, so I hope you understand my explanation for all of these videos. Thank you and goodbye. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!